YouTube, welcome back to my channel, Taylor Talks Tales. Today I have a video for you. I'm going to try to get right on into it because I actually have a lot of books to show you guys today. It's my April TBR slash when I'm reading an April video and it also has details on my giveaway that I'm doing to celebrate 300 plus subscribers. As of today, I had 330, which is amazing. Thank you guys so much. I've just felt really loved and appreciated here on BookTube. It's been a wonderful experience. It's just a fantastic community. Everyone's awesome. So thank you so much. So stay tuned to the end of the video for details on the giveaway that I'm doing. And let's just get right on into the books. So for April, I'm trying to read as many books as I can without pushing myself too much. Um, I don't want to go crazy and burn out, so I'm not doing a, um, what some people are doing, which is like a book a day. I'm kind of doing, I'm trying to do between 25 and 27, um, and some of these are novellas, so I'm not pushing myself too hard because I have some other uh, quarantine and lockdown plans, but um, I definitely want to get through quite a few books. So let's get into it. Some of these I have already read. I will let you know the first few I'm going to show you are books I've already read, and a couple of them I may have mentioned in other videos. So, here we go. First book I read was I'm Thinking of Ending Things by Ian Reid. I read this on April Fool's Day in one sitting, and I have a video filmed, and I'll be uploading it in the next couple of days. I just didn't want to inundate you with too many videos at once um, with my thoughts and feelings on this, so stay tuned for this. Um, this book is essentially about a couple and they're going to visit the boyfriend Jake's parents and they live on a farm. And the less you know about this book going in, the better. But you'll hear my thoughts and feelings soon. All right, the next two books I want to show you are both by the same author. And it's The Deep and The Hunger, both by Omakatsu. I have read these, I read them back to back, I started with The Deep and then I finished up with The Hunger, and I'm also going to be doing a video where I talk about both of them and do a review of both in one video. And this book is about the Titanic and Britannic and sort of some potential supernatural elements going on, and this one is about the Donner Party and also has some potentially supernatural elements going on. Um, both are horror slash speculative fiction and historical. And I'll leave you guys at that, and you'll hear my thoughts and feelings about these soon as well. Alright, the next book is Stephen King's The Institute. Finally got around to this. I've been wanting to read this for months now, and I also will be doing a video on this because I want to do some more Stephen King book reviews on my channel. I only have a couple up. and. Uh, yeah, I'm also excited for his new release that's coming out. I think it's supposed to come out in April now. Um, if it bleeds, it was originally supposed to come out in May, but I think um, Stephen King talked to his publisher and they're bumping it up a little earlier. But this one is essentially, it's reminiscent of Stranger Things and some of what Stephen King has written back in the 80s, but it's essentially about kids with gifted, who are, you know, have some unique abilities and they end up getting rounded up into this place called the Institute and things go from there, but it was, you know, I also will have a video up on this shortly. Alright, next one is Gideon the Ninth by Tamsin Muir. So, this book, it's a really cool looking book. It has black edges, which I think is neat, and I've been hanging on to this book for quite some time. I didn't know this, but She's wearing sunglasses. I just thought it was some sort of like school makeup and, or something, but I realized she's wearing like aviator sunglasses. Um, this one, I will read the inside flap for you. Brought up by unfriendly, ossifying nuns, ancient retainers, and countless skeletons, Gideon is ready to abandon a life of servitude and an afterlife as a reanimated corpse. She packs up her sword, her shoes, and her dirty magazines and prepares to launch in, uh, her daring escape. But her childhood nemesis won't set her free without a service. Harrow Hawk, non Gemesis, Reverend Daughter of the Ninth House, and Bone Witch Extraordinaire, has been summoned into action. The Emperor has invited the heirs to each of his loyal houses to a deadly trial of wits and skill. If Harrow Hawk succeeds, she'll become an immortal, all powerful servant of the Resurrection, but no necromancer can ascend without their cavalier. Without Gideon's sword, Harrow will fail, and the Ninth House will die. Of course, some things are better off dead. Yes, I'll also be doing a review on this. Um, but I'm excited to give you guys my thoughts and feelings about this. I like this cover quite a bit, 
so very exciting book. All right, now we are getting into what I'm currently reading. So we have Sour Candy and Blinky, both by Kaylin Patrick Burke. I loved Kin, as many of you on this channel know, and I've been wanting to explore more of his work. And I'll quickly read the backs of both of these. They are both novellas, so they're going to be very quick reads. So for Sour Candy, first glance, Phil Pendleton and his son Adam are just an ordinary father and son, no different from any other. They take walks in the park, visit county fairs, museums, and zoos, and eat lunch or eat together overlooking the lake. Some might say the father is a little too accommodating given the lack of discipline when the child loses his temper in public. Some might say he spoils his son by allowing him to set his own bedtime and eat candy whenever he wants. Some might say that such leniency is starting to take its toll on the father, given how his health has declined. What no one knows is that Phil is a prisoner, and that up until a few weeks ago, and a chance encounter at a grocery store, he had never seen the child before in his life. So, there's that one. And then for Blanky, In the wake of his infant daughter's tragic death, Steve Brannigan is struggling to keep himself together. Estranged from his wife, who refuses to be inside the house where the unthinkable happened, and unable to work, he seeks solace in the endless parade of old sitcoms and a bottle of bourbon. Until one night he hears a sound from his daughter's old room, a room now stripped bare of anything that identified it as hers, except for her security blanket, affectionately known as Blanky. Blanky, old and frayed, with its antiquated patchwork of badly sewn rabbits with black button eyes who appear to be staring at the viewer. Blinky, purchased from a strange old man at a teak stall selling baby clothes at a discount. The presence of Blinky is his daughter's in his daughter's room heralds nothing short of an unspeakable nightmare that threatens to take away what little light remains in Steve's shattered world. Because his daughter loved Blinky so much, he buried her with it. So I'm excited. Can't wait. These are gonna be back to back reads. After that, my next planned read is one I've been highly anticipating and I pre-ordered it and I was actually shocked that it arrived on time. I didn't, with everything going on, I assumed Amazon wouldn't be able to get it to me, but they did. And that is The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix. So I've read several of Grady Hendrix's books before, um, My Best Friend's Exorcism, Horror Store, and We Sold Our Souls. And it's been nice seeing him, I think he's been growing as an author. I haven't read one of his books that's a five star yet, but a couple of people I follow um, on Goodreads and here on BookTube have read this and said it was really good. It's his best work yet, so I'm very excited to dig into it. And I'll read the inside plot for you really quick because it sounds like a really cool book. Patricia Campbell's life has never felt smaller. Her husband is a workaholic, her teenage kids have their own lives, her senile mother-in-law needs constant care, and she's always a step behind on her endless to-do list. The only thing keeping her sane is her book club, a close-knit group of Charleston women united by their love of true crime. At these meetings, they're as likely to talk about the Manson family as they are about their own families. One evening after book club, Patricia is viciously attacked by an elderly neighbor, bringing the neighbor's handsome nephew, James Harris, into her life. James is well-traveled and well-read, and he makes Patricia feel things she hasn't felt in years. But when children on the other side of town go missing, their deaths written off by local police, Patricia has reason to believe James Harris is more of a Bundy than a Brad Pitt. The real problem? James is a monster of a different kind, and Patricia has already invited him in. Little by little, James will insinuate himself into Patricia's life and try to take everything she took for granted, including the book club. But she won't surrender without a fight in this blood-soaked tale of neighborly kindness gone wrong. So, I'm excited to get into this. I think it'll be a lot of fun. Next one. This is so, so much fun. I can already tell just from the cover. So, it's The Rue by Alan Baxter. See you out back. So, this is a very short, or, you know, it's a novella. It's like 120-ish pages, and it's Australian horror, and it's a creature feature, and I just think it's going to be very fun and entertaining and just right up my alley because I just... There are some books I just love to have fun with, and I think this is going to be that book. So I'll read the back to you really quick. Something is wrong in the small outback town of Morgan Creek. A farmer goes missing after a blue in the pub. A teenage couple fail to show for, up for work. When Patrick and Sheila McDonough investigate, they discover the missing person's list is growing. Before they realize what's happening, the residents of the remote town find themselves in a fight for their lives against a foe they never would have suspected. And the dry red earth will run red with blood. 
So this is going to be fun. I can already tell. All right, next book is The Forgotten Island by David Sodergren. And this one I'm also anticipating quite a bit because it's a survival novel that also incorporates some Lovecraftian themes to it, it looks like. So I'll read the back really quick. When Anna Logan agrees to go on holiday to Thailand with her estranged sister Rachel, she hopes it will be a way for them to reconnect after years of drifting apart. But now, stranded on a seemingly deserted island paradise with no radio and no food, reconciliation becomes a desperate fight for survival. For when night falls on the forgotten island, the dark secrets of the jungle reveal themselves. Something is watching them from the trees. Something ancient. Something evil. It's combining the cosmic horrors of H.P. Lovecraft with the grimy sensibilities of the video nasties, The Forgotten Island is an outrageous old-school horror novel packed with mayhem and violence. I'm very excited about this. I mean, it's horror and survival combined into one with some Lovecraftian elements to it. Yes, I'm down for it. I'm sold. Alright, next one is The Goldfinch by Donna Tartt. I picked this book up because I really enjoyed The Secret History quite a bit. I really enjoy dark academia type novels and I, you know, that was a favorite of mine when I was in high school. And I've never actually read The Goldfinch. I feel like I should, especially because I'm interested in seeing the movie because it has Finn Wolfhard in it and I want to support um, all the kids from Stranger Things because I'm a Stranger Things fan. Um, and this one sounds interesting. Uh, I'll actually read the back for you, even though it's a fairly popular one, I think. Theo Decker, a 13-year-old New Yorker, miraculously survives an accident that kills his mother. Abandoned by his father, Theo is taken in by the family of a wealthy friend. Bewildered by his strange new life and tormented by his longing for his mother, he clings to the one thing that reminds him of her, a small, mysteriously captivating painting that ultimately propels Theo into the art underworld. As an adult, Theo moves sickly between the drawing rooms of the rich and the dusty labyrinth of the antique store where he works. He is alienated and in love, and at the center of a narrowing, dangerous circle. So, we'll see. I, I'm looking forward to this. Um, if it's anything like a secret history or just like the writing style, then I think it'll be, I think it'll be good. Next one is a classic. It is The Great God Pan and Other S Horror Stories by Arthur Machen. And this one I picked up because I want to read some more classic horror, and I know this inspired like H.P. Lovecraft and some other horror authors in the 20th and 21st century, so I want to go back to when this, you know, to some of the roots of some of these classics of modern day. Um, and this one is just a short story collection, and the, on the back it just says, Something pushed out from the body there on the floor and stretched forth a slimy, wavering tentacle. So this was, I believe, published in the like late 1890s. It will be exciting to check out. This next one I picked up. It's Ohio by Stephen Markley. I picked this one up because Edward Lorne is a booktuber I've been following for years, and I also follow him on Goodreads, and he really loves this novel. And it's a little bit different from something I would pick up, um, because it's not horror, it's more kind of like a small town, there's just like a lot going on. I'll read the inside thought for you really quick just so you know about it. Um, but I picked this up because he recommended it, gave it five out of five stars, and I figured um, when I was at the library, right before it shut down, because of all the COVID-19 stuff, um, I saw this just out and I'm like, well, I might as well pick it up and give it a shot. So this is what it says on the inside lot. On a feverish summer night in 2013, four former classmates converge on the Rust Belt town where they grew up, each of them with a mission, all of them haunted by regrets, secrets, lost, li uh, lost loves. Since the turn of the century, a generation has come of age knowing only war, recession, political gridlock, racial hostility, and a simmering fear of environmental calamity. In the country's forgotten pockets, where industry long ago fled, where foreclosures, Walmarts, and opiates riddled the land, unemployment, suicide, and addiction breed marginalized disillusionment and rage. This is the world that characters in Stephen Markley's brilliant debut novel, Ohio, inherit. This is new canon. There's Bill Ashcraft, an alcoholic, drug-abusing activist whose fruitless ambitions have taken him from Cambodia to Zuccotti Park to New Orleans, and now back to The Cane, with a mysterious package strapped to the underside of his truck. Stacy Moore, a doctoral candidate reluctantly confronting the mother of her former lover. Dan Eaton, a shy veteran of three tours in Iraq, 
home for a dinner date with the high school sweetheart he's tried to forget, and the beautiful, fragile Tina Ross, whose relationship with a former football star triggers the novel's shocking climax. So I think it's going to be very interesting, and it'll, I think it's going to be a good character study, and Edward really seemed to like this a lot, so I'm going to give this one a shot. Alright, next one is Penance by Kanai Minato. This one I picked up. I couldn't get her book that I actually wanted to get, which was Confessions, but I've heard some good things about this one as well. So this one is essentially about um, this group of Japanese girls who witness this violent act where one of their friends dies, and it's told from each perspective, and it shows how it's impacted them as adults years and years later, and the mother of the girl who died essentially cursed them, and there's a lot going on, and I've heard it's supposed to be a pretty complicated and sort of dark novel, and I've been looking forward to getting into this, um, and I have confessions on order, um, and hopefully it may come at the end of April or beginning of May, we'll see, but this one sounds very interesting to me. Next one is Ronald Malfi, Little Girls. This one I've talked about a couple of times wanting to read. I know it was in at least a book haul, um, maybe two at this point. I've just been hanging on to this book, and I'm going to get to it. I am very excited. I enjoy Ronald Malfi's work. And this is a ghost story, a fairly traditional-sounding ghost story about a guy who moves into a house and things start to happen. And um, I love ghost stories, so I'm interested to see Ronald Malfi's take on a, the traditional haunted house story. Next one, I mentioned this in a, uh, my COVID-19 quarantine book tag video. This is The Hatching by Ezekiel Boone. This is about killer spiders. In fact, I'll read the inside flap because it's pretty cool. There's no waking up from this nightmare. Deep in the jungles of Peru, where so much remains unknown, a black skittering mass devours an American tourist hole. Thousands of miles away, an FBI agent investigates a fatal plane crash in Minneapolis and makes a gruesome discovery. Unusual seismic patterns register in a Kanpur, India earthquake lab, confounding the scientists there. During the same week, the Chinese government accidentally drops a nuclear bomb on in, or in an isolated region of its own country. As these incidents begin to sweep the globe, a mysterious package from South America arrives at Washington, D.C. laboratory. Something wants out. The world is on the brink of an apocalyptic disaster. An ancient species, long dormant, is now very much awake. Fun creature feature and an apocalyptic story. I'm I'm down for it. Alright, next one. I've been wanting to read this one for a while. It's a th uh, more of a thriller, I believe. And maybe speculative fiction. I'm not sure if it would fall under that. But this is The One by John Mars. And this one is essentially about... There's this test that you can take to find your soulmate. So it'll find your ideal match based off of your genetic and just like everything essentially so you'll find your one true love but things start to go wrong and things aren't as they seem and it's going from there um, I don't want to know too much about this I kind of want to go into it fairly blind so I am looking forward to it and think it's going to be quite entertaining and I've heard some good things about it all right next one is Foundry Side by Robert Jackson Bennett. I didn't get a chance to get to this back in February when I wanted to, and now I am looking forward to it. I'll read the... actually... I, I'll read the inside thought. Santia Grado is a thief, and a damn good one, and her latest target, a heavily guarded warehouse on Tavon's docks, is nothing her unique abilities can't handle. But unbeknownst to her, Santia has been sent to steal an artifact of unimaginable power, an object that could revolutionize the magical technology known as scribing. The merchant houses who control this magic, the art of using coded commands to impute everyday objects with sentience, have already used it to transform Tavon into a vast, remorseless capitalist machine. But if they can unlock the artifact's secrets, they'll rewrite the world itself to suit their aims. Now someone in those houses wants Santia dead and the artifact for themselves, and in the city of Tavon, Nobody has the power to stop them, but there are those who may have the courage to fight alongside Sensia, like the hackers who practice scribing in secret, half a step ahead of the house's thugs, or the technological wizard who's bartered his soul for political power, and, beneath his cynicism, may be desperate for a chance to redeem it, or the constable whose eagerness to bring Sensia to justice is matched only by his need to hold the powerful accountable for their sins. To have a chance at surviving, and at stopping the deadly transformation that's underway, 
Sancia will have to marshal these unlikely allies, learn to harness the artifact's power for herself, and undergo her own transformation, one that will turn her into something she could never have imagined. So, I think this will be cool. It sounds like a unique take on some fantasy tropes, and yeah, looking forward to this. Next one is The Last Astronaut by David Wellington. I also talked about this in my COVID-19 quarantine book tag. And essentially it's, you know, I'll read the back flap because it's very short, but a large alien object has entered the solar system on a straight course toward Earth. It has made no attempt to communicate and is ignoring all transmissions. Out of time and out of options, NASA turns to former mission commander Sally Jansen. Jansen was their leading astronaut till mission to Mars ended in disaster. Haunted by her failure, she lives in quiet anonymity, convinced her days in space are over. She's wrong. So I've heard this is a really fun sci-fi thriller that borders on horror. Um, and I'm I'm excited because I do enjoy some science fiction as well, especially if it gets to be pretty dark and intense. So it should be pretty fun. All right, only a couple more. Next we have is A Cosmology of Monsters by Sean Hamill. I also talked about this in my COVID-19 quarantine book tag. It's a book that I wanted to get. It was near the top of my TBR. And I am looking forward to this quite a bit. It's been on my TBR for quite some time. And I'll just read this for you really quick because it's pretty, pretty short. Noah Turner sees monsters. His father saw them and built a shrine to them with the wandering dark, an immense horror experience that the whole family operates. His practical mother has caught glimpses of terrors, but refuses to believe, too focused on keeping the family from falling apart. His brilliant older sister Eunice can't exercise them from her mind, no matter how many versions of the story she commits to paper. And his eldest sister, the dramatic and vulnerable Sydney, won't admit to seeing anything but the beckoning glow of the spotlight until it swallows her up. Noah Turner sees monsters, but unlike his family, Noah chooses to let them in. And this is recommended by Stephen King. He says, if John Irving ever wrote a horror novel, it would be something like this. I loved it. So I'm looking forward to this. Anything with monsters is just right up my alley. All right. Next is The Loneliest Girl in the Universe by Laura James. This one is a book. It's a young adult fiction that I've been wanting to read for a while. Essentially, it's about a girl who is isolated on a spaceship after her parents die and everybody else on board dies. And her struggles with that and essentially trying to get rescued and handle being completely alone in the middle of space with nobody else. So I think this sounds really interesting. Next one is a short story collection, a very short story collection. It's Revenge by Yoko Ogawa, Eleven Dark Tales. So this is just a short story collection that has um, this Japanese horror and thriller kind of blended cross-genre stories, and they all have to do with revenge, so I'm looking forward to this. I've been wanting to read some more Japanese novels, because I really enjoy what I've read so far. Like, I really like Haruki Murakami, and I just haven't talked about him on my channel, um, and then, of course, like, Battle Royale, I enjoyed the book and the movie, so there's, there's some Japanese authors that I've read. I just haven't brought them up yet, so this will be fun. All right. Next, we have No One Gets Out Alive by Adam Neville. This book is actually huge. It's almost 700 pages, and I've been on an Adam Neville kick a little bit. I've read three of his novels in the last few months or so. A couple of them made it onto my top books of 2019 list, um, and this one was recommended to me by a subscriber, so thank you so much. I'm eager to check this out, and yeah, I'll read the inside plot really quick. When Stephanie moves to a deprived neighborhood of North Birmingham, she's just happy to find an affordable room for rent that's large enough not to deserve her previous room's nickname, The Cell. The eccentric, albeit slightly overly friendly, landlord seems nice and welcoming enough. The ceilings are high, and all of the other tenants are also girls. Things aren't great, but they're stable. Or at least that's what Stephanie tells herself when she impulsively hands over enough money to cover the first month's rent and decides to give it a go. But soon after, she becomes uneasy about her rash decision. She hears things in the night, feels them, things, or people, who aren't there in the light, who couldn't be there, because after all, her door is locked every night and the key is still in place in the morning. Concern soon turn to terror when the voices she hears and presence she feels each night become hostile. It's clear that something very bad has happened in this house, and something even worse is happening now. Stephanie has to find a way out before whatever is going on in the house finds her first. So, 
I am looking forward to this quite a bit. And then we have Pitch Dark by Courtney Alameda. This one I'm looking forward to. I've read her other book that she has published, or at least she may have others, but I know of the more famous one, which is Shudder. Um, and that one was like pretty decent. I read it when it first came out years ago, and I, I think I gave it like 3.5 out of 5. It had some good scenes, but there was a lot of info dumping in it. But I think um, she, I'm always willing to give authors more chances, especially with, you know, I think that you can always improve as an author, and I'm always willing to check out their newer works. And this one sounds pretty cool. In space, no one can hear you scream. Lost to time, Tech Morgan and his crew have slept in stasis aboard the USS John Muir for centuries. Their ship harbors a chunk of Earth, which, unbeknownst to them, is the last hope for the failing human race. Laura Cruz is a ship raider searching the galaxy for the history that was scattered to the stars. Once her family locates the John Muir and its precious cargo, they are certain human civilization is saved. When Tech and Laura's worlds collide, literally, the two teens must outwit their enemies, evade brutal monsters that kill with sound, and work together to save the John Muir, and the whole human race. So that sounds very creepy, and I like sci-fi horror, and I think this will scratch that itch quite well. And then my last two books are the uh, that I'm planning on reading this month are the last two books in the Dresden Files series, 14 and 15, and I didn't get them out to show you because they're kind of down in my bookshelf, and you know I figured I'm just going to show them all when I do my big video. Uh, review that's going to come out sometime this month. So that's what I have planned for April, and I think April's going to be a very good reading month. It may change a little bit because I'm a mood based reader, so occasionally I may pick up a book or read something else, um, but that's sort of what I'm, I'm sorry about that. My camera battery died. I've noticed it only lasts 27 minutes and like 12 seconds or something like that. So let's finish up this video. I'm sorry it's ended up being longer than I anticipated. We're getting into the giveaway now. So, unlike my last two giveaways, I'm actually going to give you guys, whoever wins the giveaway, the option. You will have the option to pick which book of the three that I'm going to show you that you would like to uh, have me send to you. So, first book is Dean Kuntz's Intensity. So, this book is about a uh, serial killer and he is tracking down this young woman, it's told from the young woman's perspective. Um, she ends up crossing paths with him, and she's also, she's essentially trying to escape while also trying to save a teenage girl in the process. And it's a very interesting book, and it's very thrilling, and I tend not to read a whole lot of Dean Koontz. Um, I've actually been thinking of making a video as to why, like, I just, for whatever reason, just haven't really clicked with him. There's like a few of his books I like, but as a whole I'm a Stephen King fangirl, not a Dean Koontz girl. But this one is pretty good, so you can have the option to pick this one. Or there's also Ruthless by Carolyn Lee Adams. This is a young adult novel, but it's a very interesting one and it's very fast-paced. Um, it's also has to deal with a serial killer this one, there's a girl named Ruth, she has red hair, and she's this very ambitious young woman, and she ends up getting kidnapped by the serial killer who works on her family's ranch, and he kills red-headed girls. He's just obsessed with killing red-headed girls, and things go from there, and it's very much a game of cat and mouse, and her trying to survive, and it was pretty, pretty enjoyable, so you can choose to pick that one. Or, last one is The Book of the Unnamed Midwife by Meg Ellison. This book is a post-apocalyptic slash apocalyptic novel, and it has to do with a virus, so it might be an interesting read to read during this time. It didn't make my post-apocalyptic fiction favorites, um, but it's still pretty good. I'd give it a 4 out of 5 star. And I, fun fact, uh, I read this book when I was stuck during this big historic blizzard that hits the Minneapolis airport a couple years ago when I was on my way to... Pittsburgh to visit my ex's uh, family, and this is the exact copy I was reading too. Um, the other two books are new, but this one is actually used, but it's in perfect condition, I would say, so, um, and it's got a little bit of that history to it. This one is essentially about a virus that strikes the world, and it makes uh, most women and children die, and it makes also childbirth 
extremely dangerous, like women just flare up with this fever and both the women and the baby die, or the baby dies. And so there's just this huge population plummet and it's following this midwife and she's unnamed throughout the whole story and about her trying to find a sense of purpose and what she's observing and discovering along the way and seeing if she can help in any any way. So it's a very interesting book. So in order to enter the giveaway, first make sure you're a subscriber, this is for my subscribers, and like the video and then leave a comment. And leave a comment just listing a couple books that you're planning on reading for the month of April. And if you happen to see any of the books that I mentioned in here, um, tell me which book sounds the most interesting to you and why, and that's pretty much all you have to do. So just, you know, be a subscriber, like the video, and then leave a comment. And then I'm going to, in two weeks from now, so I'm up uploading this on a Friday night, um, I'm going to do it two weeks from today. So today's April 10th, so it'll be not next Friday, but the Friday afterwards. The cutoff's going to be at 11 p.m. And then the following Saturday, I'm going to be doing a video, and then I'll also announce the winner then, because the last couple of giveaways, I just messaged the person who won, but this time around, I'm going to do it so that way everybody kind of knows the results of it. So... Thank you so much for watching my video. Please like, comment, rate, subscribe. I really appreciate all the support. It's been such a wonderful experience here on BookTube and I am looking forward to continuing to make a lot more videos and I hope you all are doing well, staying healthy and, you know, getting a lot of reading done and just relaxing and, not, you know, not letting everything get to you. So, um, anyway, thank you guys so much. Have a wonderful evening and happy reading. Bye.